I'd love for you to tell me and my entire audience, what are we getting wrong? What are the big no-nos with food that we really need to pay attention to? Well, you know, Hippocrates, the father of medicine 2,500 years ago, said all disease begins in the gut. And he didn't have the sophisticated blood tests that I have available to me now to look for what's called leaky gut or intestinal permeability. Uh, but he was absolutely right. In fact, a friend and colleague of mine, Alessio Fasano, who's now at Harvard, um, has published papers saying all disease begins in leaky gut. And uh, I think he's absolutely right. So, so many of the foods that we now eat uh, contain uh, plant compounds that are called lectins that are perfectly designed to create leaky gut. In fact, most people have heard of gluten uh, in wheat, rye, and barley. There's also a gluten-like molecule, molecule in oats. And Dectrazano was the first to show that the gluten molecule is uh, one of the major causes of breaking uh, holes in the intestinal barrier. And so we, we've raised you know, multiple generations now uh, thinking that whole grains are actually good for us. But in fact, if you look at traditional cultures, traditional cultures have always spent considerable amount of effort to take the hull off of grains before they eat it. The uh, French could not imagine eating a whole grain baguette. Um, mm. The Italians up until tourists forced them to would not imagine having whole wheat pasta. It would just be crazy. In fact, in England in the Middle Ages, there was a huge controversy about uh, making bread as white as possible. Uh, the royalty ate the white bread and the peasants got the brown bread. And uh, in fact, the controversy was that bone meal was actually mixed into bread to make it look white. So uh, fun fact. But we, so lot, much of our food now is number one, um, refined, like you've talked about before and processed. But the other thing that I think we're now seeing an entire generation, the millennial generation, is the first generation that has been completely exposed throughout their lifetime to two things that have never happened before. And number one, and that is broad spectrum antibiotics. Broad spectrum antibiotics, we take all the time uh, for uh, dumb reasons for the most part, but they're fed to our animals. And those antibiotics are incorporated in the flesh of the animals we eat. And those broad spectrum antibiotics kill off our entire microbiome, which is probably the most important organ in our body. The second thing that's happened in the last 40 years is we've been continuously exposed to the a weed killer Roundup, glyphosate. And glyphosate used to be only marketed as being sprayed on GMO crops. But unfortunately, Roundup is now used as a desiccant to dry and kill crops before harvest. So it's been sprayed on all wheat, all oats, uh, all uh, soybeans, all canola plants, um, and it's not washed off afterwards. And it's not only fed to us in all of our grain products that we eat, but it's also fed to all of our animals. And so glyphosate, uh, which is a major intestinal disruptor by itself, and also a disruptor of the microbiome is now constantly in our food supply. And Mark Hyman, even who eats about as clean as anybody can eat, still has remarkably high levels of glyphosate uh, in, his, in his body. And if Marx still has glyphosate, uh, there's no hope for you know, an, an ordinary human being. So those two factors um, are huge uh, troublemakers in no matter what food we eat anymore. So what can we do? I mean, I, I know, I think in Holland, in Europe, they, they banned Roundup, but yes. in America, as do you, yeah. but isn't yeah. that what people do if we're, if we're ingesting this against our better judgment? 
Well, first of all, I mean, even California wines where I live I have glyphosate in them unless you look for organic or biodynamic wine. And one of the wonderful things about Europe, particularly in winemaking, is there has been a very early uh, and consensual effort to have organic growing of grapes, have biodynamic growing of grapes. Um, I spend a lot of my time in Europe visiting uh, winemakers and chefs who work with organic produce and biodynamic produce. Uh, we should, whenever possible, uh, eat organic foods, um, do the best we can. We should, whenever possible, eat wild seafood, eat grass-fed, grass-finished beef. Unfortunately, in the United States, there's absolutely no labeling law to determine what means grass-fed beef. And technically, if the cow eats grass for one day of its life, and then goes to a feedlot and is fed corn and soybeans, you can label it grass fed because the cow did eat grass for one day. That's terrible. It's That's terrible. So terrible. It's just so awful. You know, I know people think that food manufacturers really care about you, but they really care about a profit. So if we've got these holes in our gut, that sounds to, I, I guess people listen to well, that's like, oh, I've got holes in my gut, but what can, how do we know we've got a holes in our gut? And what can we do to start fixing that? Can we fix it? I think that's a, a great question. And what I've tried to do in all my books is quite frankly, if you have any disease process, you name the disease, whether it's something as simple as a skin rash, it's something as complex as an autoimmune disease, if you have high blood pressure, if you have prediabetes, if you have diabetes, if you have heart disease, uh, I can guarantee you, based on my research and multiple other people's research, that you do have leaky gut. And Hippocrates was right, that is the cause of your disease. And the exciting thing is uh, that my data that I've published and other people's is that when you seal leaky gut, and it is quite possible to seal it, that these diseases uh, go away, they resolve. Uh, my own clinic, 94% of people with autoimmune disease, the autoimmune disease is in remission within six months of going on the program. Uh, my own personal experience, uh, again, my high blood pressure went away, my prediabetes went away, my arthritis went away. I used to wear uh, braces on my knees to run. I don't have braces on my knees anymore. I grew back my cartilage. We see people grow back their cartilage in their knees and their hips and cancel their hip or knee replacement. And if you had asked me you know, 20 years ago if these things were possible, I probably would have laughed you out of the room. Uh, but uh, the, you know, the human body has, has remarkable reparative capabilities. And Hippocrates, long ago, said that all of us, every creature has what he referred to as translated to the green life force energy. And that sounds very California speak, but uh, what he was saying was that we all have this energy that wants to actually have perfect health. And that there are external factors that are preventing most of us from expressing that energy. And he believed, and I've certainly now parroted him, that a phys physician's job is to act like a detective and determine what those external factors are that are preventing this green life force energy from happening, and then remove them, teach the patient to remove these, and the patient will heal it himself or herself with this green life force energy. And uh, that's actually why I keep doing this because I can put a bypass in somebody and maybe save their life, but I can you know, keep them going to have a great, long, healthy lifespan if I just teach them what to eat and teach them what to avoid. And he was right. And uh, you know, wow, what a smart guy 2,500 years ago. 
I know, amazing. So what should we be eating to heal leaky gut? If we could heal leaky gut, and you've just said we can, tell me, tell our audience what they need to eat and indeed not eat in order to heal leaky gut. Because it sounds like the, the answer is in our hands, the answer is in our kitchen, the answer is in our shopping cart. What should we be eating and indeed avoiding to heal leaky gut? Well, when I was a senior registrar at Great Ormond Street, the hospital for sick kids in London, um, one of our GI professors probably said one of the most important things I've ever heard. And he, and he said, it's not what I tell you to eat that's important, it's what I tell you not to eat. And cool. so uh, it's what I tell you not to eat that's the most important thing to stop leaky gut. That's number one. Number two uh, is we have to eat for the bacteria that live in our gut, our microbiome. And we know very well what these bacteria want to eat. They want to have prebiotic fiber. They want soluble fiber. And that's actually very easily, easily accomplished. Uh, leaves are loaded with soluble fiber. Uh, tubers like jicama, like yams, are loaded with soluble fiber. Asparagus is loaded with soluble fiber. The chicory family of vegetables, uh, radicchio, Belgian endive, uh, frisee, chicory itself, is loaded with soluble fiber. Asparagus is loaded with soluble fiber. I often joke to my patients that what I really want them to become is a gorilla who lives in Italy. And by that, I mean, you should be eating a lot of leaves and pour olive oil on it. Mm -hmm. And there's beautiful examples that I use in my current book, The Energy Paradox, and also in The Longevity Paradox, that if we give the microbiome the fiber that they need to eat, that they produce these compounds that are now called postbiotics. And people have heard of probiotics, friendly bacteria. People are beginning to hear of prebiotics, what these friendly bacteria need to eat. And now postbiotics is the exciting discovery of how leaky gut is healed. And so these are, com these are compounds like short chain fatty acids like butyrate or acetate, but they're also gases like hydrogen sulfide, the rotten egg smell, uh, hydrogen gas, uh, the Hindenburg was full of hydrogen gas. And we now know that these gases constitute what's been defined as a trans kingdom language between our microbiome and all of our cells and all of our neurons in our brain and all of our energy producing organelles, the mitochondria. And once we give the microbiome the foods they need, they produce these compounds that seal leaky gut. And as I showed in the longevity paradox, if you have a non-leaky gut, there is no question that you will have an amazing long health span, but more excitingly, you will have an amazing long lifespan. And just to, just to scare everybody, in the United States, uh, we've now entered our fourth year in a row where our lifespan has declined four years in a row. People think, well, we keep getting, you know, our lifespan increases every year. That was true up until four years ago. And each successive year, we are now having shorter lifespans. And sadly, unless something changes, um, the baby boom, boomer generation, my generation, will sadly be the longest living, at least Americans that ever lived, uh, unless we change something. And that, that scares me to death. Um, because yeah. unless something happens, my kids and my grandchildren will not live as long as I am. Uh, that's all diet related. It's all diet related. It's, it's all, all diet. diet related. Yeah. yeah. So you told us what we must eat, these leaves with olive oil and a little bit of salt, and they are quite yummy, even though people think, oh, leaves, that's just rabbit food. But of course, if you eat them, you'll start to like them. But what must you not eat? Because I think that's really going to shock people when you tell them what they mustn't eat. 
So in general, the more I can keep people away from whole grains, uh, the better. The more I can keep people away from uh, beans and legumes that have not been pressure cooked, the better. The nightshade family, like potatoes, tomatoes, eggplant, uh, pe bell peppers, goji berries, uh, they have to be peeled and deseeded. The lectins are in the peels and seeds. And traditionally, traditional cultures have always peeled and deseeded these foods before they're eaten. Uh, and it's hilarious going to France or going to uh, Italy and talking to chefs and they go, oh, of course, you know, everyone knows you have to peel and deseed a tomato before you eat it. Anyone knows that. Well, you know, how do you know that? Well, my grandmother taught my mother. Well, how did she know that? In fact, interestingly, Italians refused to eat tomatoes for 200 years after their native son, Columbus, brought them back from the Americas because they felt that they were so lethal. Mm. In fact, Americans did not eat tomatoes until the late 1800s because they uh, thought they were lethal and they were actually pretty correct. Um, so th that's peanuts and cashews. 95% um, of human beings have a preformed antibody to the peanut lectin. And uh, we're you know, now seeing peanut allergies uh, that are crazy complex. Cashews, believe it or not, there's a cashew picker's disease. People who uh, harvest cashews get terrible burns on their hands. And that's because cashews are part of the poison ivy family. And why anyone would want to swallow poison ivy is beyond my comprehension. You can, defuse, you can defuse these things by a pressure cooker, but pressure cooking will not destroy the gluten in uh, wheat, rye, and barley, and will not destroy the gluten-like molecule in oats. And we see this all the time. Uh, just this week, I had a patient who uh, resolved a very painful autoimmune disease and then uh, called me because he started having recurrence of his pain. And, and I said, well, what are you eating? He says, oh, I eat perfectly. Uh, why? And I said, well, you've changed something in your diet. And he said, no, not a thing. And I said, well, you know, let's kind of review. And he said, oh, uh, now that you mention it, I've been on an oat milk kick and I've been using oat milk in my lattes and my coffees and in my smoothies. And I said, you can't do that. And, you know, there's a lectin in oats. And he said, Duh, he said, I forgot all about that. Thank you, goodbye. Because um, people believe that oats is so healthy, porridge oats for breakfast. And as you say, Oatly is one of the most, it's one of the wealthiest companies in the world now. They've, Oatly has done so well, because people think, oh, I, I, can't, I shouldn't have milk, so I'll buy oat milk or soy milk or all this so, cashew milk is another one. And so people think that this must be really healthy. Number one, my oldest daughter is a horsewoman, and she is correct. The only purpose of oats is to fatten horses for winter. And a whole, oat, horses will push you out of the way to get to a bucket of oats. Number two, there were some beautiful studies that were done in England at the turn of the century in orphanages. And there were horrible dental caries in orphanages. And uh, the there was a beautiful study designed of taking kids porridge away from them and giving them cod liver oil and comparing them to a group that the kids still ate their porridge and cod liver oil. And both groups uh, did better, but only the group that had the porridge taken away from them actually had resolution of their cavities the teeth grew back normally and the cavities resolved by taking away the oatmeal. So like I say, if you're a horse, have all the oats you want to get fat for the winter, but this is not a health food. And I've seen so many patients through the years with autoimmune diseases, particularly where oats were one of the big culprits. And isn't it true that the whole the whole human jaw changed when we began to eat grains and we introduced grains into our diet? Our whole jaw changed dramatically from someone who wasn't eating grains and was living on healthy plants and lean protein. And yeah, I, you know that was my research uh, as an undergraduate. And uh, humans 
were up until 10,000 years ago when uh, grains and beans were introduced to our diet for the first time, we were actually very tall creatures. Um, we stood about six feet tall way back then. And uh, within 2000 years uh, of introducing grains and beans, the human being shrunk over a foot. And the first examples of uh, arthritis began to appear in skeletons. And particularly, you know, having lived in England, seeing all these little, you know, coats of, uh, uh, of arms and soldiers in, uh, in their iron uh, uh, yeah. and the little tiny beds, yeah. um, you know, and we, we shrunk dramatically. And you're right, Weston Price, the famous dentist, a uh, Canadian dentist from America, uh, showed and documented in his uh, landmark book, uh, Metabolic and Physical Degeneration, how within a generation of being exposed to modern grain products and modern sugars, that jaws completely changed shape, that teeth, which were perfect, uh, began to get crowded. And we could document this all over the world within one generation of changing people's food from a traditional diet to our diet. Check out my next video here. I see all my clients and they all say the same thing. I'm waiting for motivation. You know what? Motivation doesn't go, here I am. I'm motivation, I'm at your door, and I've come to motivate you. You are firing new neurons, the mind